Listening to everything that's been announced today, it's clear that AI is already helping people from their everyday tasks to their most ambitious, productive, and imaginative endeavors. Our AI innovations like multimodality, long context, and agents are at the cutting edge of what this technology can do, take it to a whole new level, its capacity to help people. Yet, as with any emerging technology, there are still risks and new questions that will arise as AI advances and its uses evolve. In navigating these complexities, we're guided by our AI principles, and we're learning from our users, partners, and our own research. To us, building AI responsibly means both addressing the risks and maximizing the benefits for people and society. Let me begin with what we're doing to address the risks. Here, I want to focus on how we are improving our models and protecting against their misuse. Beyond what Demis shared earlier, we're improving our models with an industry standard practice called red teaming, in which we test our own models and try to break them to identify weaknesses. Adding to this work, we're developing a cutting edge technique we call AI assisted red teaming. This draws on Google DeepMind's gaming breakthroughs like AlphaGo, where we train AI agents to compete against each other and improve and expand the scope of their red teaming capabilities. We're developing AI models with these capabilities to help address adversarial prompting and limit problematic outputs. We're also improving our models with feedback from two important groups, thousands of internal safety experts with a range of disciplines, and a range of independent experts from academia to civil society. Both groups help us identify emerging risks from cybersecurity threats to potentially dangerous capabilities in areas like chem bio. Combining Cuban Insight with our safety testing methods will help make our models and products more accurate, reliable, and safer. This is particularly important as technical advances like better intonation make interactions with AI feel and sound more human-like. We're doing a lot of research in this area, including the potential for harm and misuse. We're also developing new tools to help prevent the misuse of our models. For example, Imagine 3 and VO create more realistic imagery and videos we must also consider how they might be misused to spread misinformation. To help, last year, we introduced SynthID, a tool that adds imperceptible watermarks to our AI-generated images and audio so that they're easier to identify. Today, we're expanding SynthID to two new modalities, text and video. These launches build on our efforts to deploy state-of-the-art watermarking capabilities across modalities. Moving forward, we'll keep integrating advances like watermarking and other emergent techniques to secure our latest generations of Gemini, Imagine, Lyria, and Via models. We're also committed to working with the ecosystem with all of you to help others build on the advances we're making. And in the coming months, will be open sourcing SynthID text watermarking. This will be available in our updated responsible generative AI toolkit, which we created to make it easier for developers to build AI responsibly. We're also collaborating with C2PA, and we support C2PA collaborating with Adobe, Microsoft, startups, and many others to build and implement standards that improve the transparency of digital media. Now, let's turn to the second and equally important part of our responsible AI approach. How are we building AI to benefit people and society? Today, our AI advances are helping to solve real-world problems like accelerating the work of 1.8 million scientists in 190 countries who are using alpha folds to work on issues like neglected diseases, helping predict floods in more than 80 countries, and helping organizations like the United Nations 
track progress of the world's 17 sustainable development goals with data commons. And now, generative AI is unlocking new ways for us to make the world's information and knowledge universally accessible and useful for learning. Billions of people already use Google products to learn every day. And generative AI is opening up new possibilities, allowing us to ask questions like, what if everyone everywhere could have their own personal AI tutor on any topic? Or what if every educator could have their own assistant in the classroom? Today marks a new chapter for learning and education at Google. I'm excited to introduce LearnLM, our new family of models based on Gemini and fine-tuned for learning. LearnLM is grounded in educational research, making learning experiences more personal and engaging. And it's coming to the products you use every day, like Search, Android, Gemini, and YouTube. In fact, you've already seen LearnLM on stage today when it helps Samir with his son's homework on Android. Now, let's see how this works in the Gemini app. Earlier, Sissy introduced Gems, custom versions of Gemini that can act as personal assistive experts on any topic. We're developing some pre-made Gems, which will be available in the Gemini app and web experience, including one called Learning Coach. With Learning Coach, you can get step-by-step -step study guidance, along with helpful practice and memory techniques designed to build understanding rather than just give you the answer. Let's say you're a college student studying for an upcoming biology exam. If you need a tip to remember the formula for photosynthesis, Learning Coach can help. Learning Coach, along with other pre-made gems, will launch in Gemini in the coming months. And you can imagine what features like Gemini Live can unlock for learning. Another example is a new feature in YouTube that uses LearnLM to make educational videos more interactive, allowing you to ask a clarifying question, get a helpful explanation, or take a quiz. This even works for those long lectures or seminars, thanks to Gemini Model's long context capabilities. This feature in YouTube is already, is already rolling out to select Android users. As we work to extend LearnLM beyond our own products, we're partnering with experts and institutions like Columbia Teachers College, Arizona State University, and Khan Academy to test and improve the new capabilities in our models for learning. And we've collaborated with MIT RAISE to develop an online course to help educators better understand and use generative AI. We're also working directly with educators to build more helpful generative AI tools with LearnLM. For example, in Google Classroom, we're drawing on the advances you've heard about today to develop new ways to simplify and improve lesson planning and enable teachers to tailor lessons and content to meet the individual needs of their students. Standing here today makes me think back to my own time as an undergraduate. Then AI was considered speculative, far from any real world uses. Today we can see how much is already real, how much it is already helping people from their everyday tasks to their most ambitious, productive, and imaginative endeavors. And how much more is still to come? This is what motivates us. I'm excited about what's ahead and what we'll build with all of you. Back to you, Sundar.